your bladder doesn't need to be there. There is nothing saying that it absolutely has to be there. In fact, anatomists would consider this thing to be an organ of convenience in the sense that if you didn't have one, it's not, I mean, it's going to make for a very gross world, right? But it wouldn't be really weird if you think about it because nobody would have a bladder in that, in that context. So, you know, you'd be looking at people like, hey, clean up your pee puddle. It'd be a very gross world, but it wouldn't be weird. In fact, there are creatures on this planet, they're very small, that don't have bladders. And so there's kind of like this, you know, steady and consistent uh, urine that is going to be coming out. So, I mean, like, it's a convenience organ, which is really interesting to think about. But then on top of that, another really interesting thing is to consider this is not in your control. It's made of something called smooth muscle, which is an involuntary type of muscle. You cannot go, hey, bladder, contract and then urinate. That's just not possible. But I, but I mean, look, I, I'm assuming you're like me right now. I'm not peeing my pants, which I'm super excited about. I love not peeing my pants. It's one of my favorite things, but I can decide when I want to go urinate. And I'm assuming you could do the same thing. And so it makes you wonder then, okay, if you're not in charge of it, then how on earth are you in charge of it? <laughs> it seems some, I'm not good at math, but something is not adding up here. And then another thing, you know, that you might be wondering, at least I used to wonder this, was like, how much could it even hold? Like, could I, like if I was really had to pee, could I fill up my entire Yeti? I could doubt it, right? That, but that shouldn't be possible. But how much, right? Could, how about, how about this, you know, this cup? Is that possible? Right, the bladder, like, do, 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 can different people pee different amounts? Now, the, the bladder, when you stop and think about it, is actually a very interesting organ. And so I'm going to answer those questions, but I think to best answer them, we need to kind of just investigate the anatomy a little bit here. And so uh, this right here is what we call a parasagittal view, more or less. It's not perfectly parasagittal. There's some artistic liberties that have been taken with this. And what I mean is, in, in terms of sagittal, it's like you basically are looking at left and right. You're dividing the body. You could do it right down the midline, which is what we would call a mid-sagittal view, or you could do it off-center, and we call it a parasagittal view. And that's essentially what we're seeing here, because this highlighted structure is going to be the bladder. However, um, if we were doing a true mid-sagittal view, you'd be looking right down the center of it, because it is in the center of the body. Um, but the bladder, as you can see here, has this really unique twisted muscle. So I want you to look at all the other muscle around it. So this is the uterus, because this is a female view. And then you can see part of the colon. Uh, like there's there's pelvic floor muscles. Uh, you can see like what looks to be psoas, major and minor, right? There's body wall muscles. And you're looking at all these different muscles. The fiber orientation is pretty consistent, but you look at the bladder and all of a sudden everything's twisted. It's like it's you got longitudinal fibers, you got circular fibers, everything's just kind of twisted in and on itself. And it's really kind of interesting, right? Actually, I think that's the rectum. <laughs> the rectum is not the colon, by the way. So again, really interesting to see that the, the rectum, which by the way, means straight. My point is simply, why is the bladder like that? Well, this is a type of muscle called, or the name of this muscle is called the detrusor muscle. Detrusor, which is fun to say. And in fact, I have a different view. Let me kind of scan down here. We'll be able to see it a little bit better. Um, this is a coronal view. So you're looking at like front to back. And this is, again, going to be a, f a female view. And you, so you can now see inside of the bladder itself. But then we can also see this highlighted detrusor muscle going around. And so the detrusor uh, muscle is smooth. Again, you're not in charge of this. And so you might be wondering, well, then how on earth can, can you decide when to urinate? Well, what happens is inside of your bladder are stretch receptors that are pretty much just monitoring how much urine is inside the bladder at any given time because you know there's only so much you can fit right to answer another question that we had was you can fit anywhere between about 400 to 1000 milliliters so up to about a liter of urine inside of there which if that's the case this is this is not a liter this well maybe actually uh, I feel like this is more about 750 milliliters it is technically possible to fill that entire thing up if you really had to pee if you are on that upper end of the spectrum, but it tends to max out at around a, about a liter or a thousand milliliters. So like how this works is you actually just are constantly making urine. So this right here, by the way, we'll kind of, again, we'll lead into this. These little things right here are called the ureteric orifices. Basically these are openings where the ureters, which are these long tubes that are coming from the kidneys, will insert and then deposit the urine. 
And what they do is they deposit it onto this really interesting triangular shaped structure here. This is called the trigone. And it's made of smooth muscle as well, but it's really, so the, 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 the muscle is named smooth muscle. Like that's the type of muscle, that's its name. But like, um, I'm telling you, this is physically smooth because what'll happen is the urine can then just slide down. And when you look at behind it, it's not. Right, you see all these little folds? These are called rugi. So basically when the bladder is empty, the rugi are, are all folded in on themselves. And then as it kind of like gets stretched, they unfold and then you can just kind of like inflate the bladder. Right? It's very similar to a balloon. Imagine like this really folded balloon. And that's exactly what happens here. So imagine as that's happening inside of here, there are going to be stretch receptors that are monitoring how much urine is physically inside. And as when they reach a certain level, which you can usually start feeling it around like a hundred or so milliliters, it kind of depends. Um, but that's usually where it is, but you can typically ignore that. Usually it's like when you get to like the two, three, 400 milliliter range, that's when you're like, I should probably pee. And then you're going to go for it. And what happens is you are then in charge. Let's say you're in the you're in the restroom. You're in charge of this right here. This this is a pelvic floor muscle, but this is um, and it creates a sphincter here. This external urethral or uh, uh, sphincter is going to actually be made of skeletal muscle, meaning you are in charge of it. And so what will happen is you can kind of relax this muscle, and as you relax it then what's happening is the detrusor muscle is contracting at the same time. Like in, in reality, this is what, when you reach a certain stretch, that sends a reflex that says, hey, it's time to contract the bladder. And so then the detrusor muscle will start contracting. But as long as you are holding this external sphincter together, you're not going to pee your pants, which is pretty awesome. I think that's really cool. But as soon as you relax it, then the detrusor muscle is just contracting and it's just going to squeeze all that urine. And, th and this detrusor muscle is capable of contracting for a long period of time. And it's actually super impressive. I can't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but it can contract for a, a considerable amount of time. And then it's just gonna squeeze all that urine out and then it's gonna relax as soon as the, it's empty. And then the ureters are constantly dropping more urine. It's about a milliliter per minute, which, um, by the way, just letting you know, I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because when you're on the toilet <laughs> and you're just, you know, you, you don't need to be there. You're on your phone. You're just scanning. You're just doing that type of thing. And then a little bit more pee comes out. I, I want you to know that is the pee. That is the urine that you made when you were sitting there. And basically, you're just kind of in this constant state of relaxing your um, external urethral sphincter and then the, the detrusor muscle is just capable of letting it go but also you have the trigone that's just letting it slide out all of that is naturally happening so my point here is yes you are not in charge of the detrusor muscle but you're in charge of this external sphincter and so you can decide when you pee and when you don't pee right so that is going to make a lot of sense um, but the next question we got to answer is well then okay well why have one like what is the purpose of <laughs> of a bladder. Why do you need one? And you don't technically need, but they get they do get to be pretty helpful. Right? Like for one hygiene is going to be important. And you imagine again, if you're just peeing all over the place, there's just urine dropping all over the place. That'd be gross. It wouldn't be good, especially if you had fur or body hair or anything like that. That's not going to be a good experience. But plus if you also think about it from an evolutionary standpoint, imagine if there's just urine falling out of you, that is going to come with a scent. And then you could have predators that could be following that. It, it, so that doesn't make much sense. Then you could also think of it, since there are scents, you could use this to help mark territory. To be like, no, you, I peed on this thing, therefore this is mine. <laughs> you know, which is what animals do all the time, right? The, the bladder is an absolutely fascinating organ when you really think about this thing. I mean, yes, it's just this hollow organ that fills up with urine and then it squeezes it out. But... You know, there's a little bit more to it when you give it just some extra thought. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. If there are any other structures or organs or glands, you name it, that you'd like us to go over, why don't you go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and we will be sure to cover that in a future video. And while you're down there, might as well hit the like button. That actually will help this video perform better and then more people can see how awesome their bladder is and everything that comes with that but as always i really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me for a little bit um, but i will see you next time